Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Life's Good. My name is AJ. I live in the northeast of England. It's mid-November. It's cold and wet outside, so I have decided to stay in the kitchen and prepare for Christmas by making my Christmas cake. I'll put the information regarding the um, ingredients in the comments underneath the video and I will show you step by step how I make this very simple recipe cake mixture for my Christmas cake. Unlike a lot of cake recipes, this one starts off on the stove. I've got a good size saucepan here. Got it on the stove. I'm going to turn on the heat. And we're going to start adding the fruit and other ingredients to this pan. First of all, you're going to need 12 ounces of dried fruit. And I've got some in this container here. 12 ounces mixed fruit in the pan. You're also going to need some uh, butter. I've got about four ounces of butter and that's going in the pan. Honestly, this is so easy. Uh, what do we need now? Four ounces of brown sugar. I've got dark brown soft sugar here, about four ounces of that in the pan. Uh, you're going to need a bit of water with this. I've got about a third of a pint. Just over, Actually, it's, I'm just looking in here. It's actually more than a quarter. It's just over a quarter of a pint of water in here, which equates to just under 200 millilitres in a metric capacity. So the water goes in. You're going to need, um, what have I got here? Some nuts. I've got some mixed nuts. Um, I'm just looking at my recipe book just below you there just to check on the uh, quantities here. Well, you've got two heaped tablespoons of mixed nuts in there. I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of mixed peel. It's a bit sticky, this stuff, but I've got one, two, a little bit more. It's quite a large cake. So I've got some mixed peel I've put in there. I'm going to want some glacé cherries. Um, it, it's as, much, as many as you like. Oh, and incidentally, the nuts. This is a good point. Um, nuts. If you're allergic or you don't like nuts in your cake, leave them out. It's not crucial. You can leave the nuts out. So if anyone in your family doesn't like the nuts or are allergic to nuts, please leave them out. Um, I've got about a half a pot of glacé cherries here. I'm going to try very hard they're sticky very sticky these i'm going to pop those in as well so the cherries in with all of that um chopped nuts peel cherries everything else um, i do add a little bit of vanilla essence this is not essential it's not crucial but a little bit of vanilla essence does give it a nice rounded taste so i'll just drop in a bit in there look I didn't measure that. I would imagine that's about a teaspoon-ish. And it's just a case now of bringing this to a simmer. So all those ingredients, water, butter, fruit, nuts, cherries, mixed peel in the pan. Keep it mixed and bring it to a simmer. I have simmered the fruit for about eight minutes. It's gone a bit sticky. It's all very soft and I have now turned off the heat. So I'm just letting this sit here and allowing it to cool down a little bit. In the meantime, I have just switched on the oven and I've set it at 150 degrees Celsius and I'm preparing my tin. I have a square cake tin to use today. It's got a removable base. You can just push the base up through. I've lined the base with some baking parchment or grease proof paper, if you wish. And I've uh, greased the pan with butter. So that is waiting for the mixture to go in. Now, 
It's not quite ready because you still have a few more ingredients to mix into this before you put it in your baking tin. I've given the mixture about 12 to 15 minutes to cool down slightly. And what I'm going to do now is add one large beaten egg. And I've beaten it with a fork and I'm going to put that in with the fruit. And we're going to, I've got a spoon here, I'm going to give that a little stir in. Now, if the fruit was piping hot when I put the egg in, the egg would immediately cook and go solid. So by allowing the fruit to cool slightly, you can now mix the egg into the mixture. We now need to add the flour. And I've got eight ounces of self-raising flour measured out here and I'm going to just throw that in on the top not all of it give it a chance and mix that first amount in and then the rest so eight ounces of self-raising flour whoops making a mess of the stove now this is going to dry everything up. This is going to become quite a dry mixture now. And you want to give it a really good mix until the white flour has blended with all the cake mix in here. Now, there's another tip now. If this, if when you add the flour, it becomes too solid, too sticky, and you can't work it. You can always add a little bit more water just to wet it and loosen it up. This at the moment doesn't look too bad. You don't want it a wet mixture, but you don't want it solid like rock solid cement either. Now, if I can show you this, you see what that's like? It's a really sticky, gloopy, cake mix and a nice light brown color there's one more ingredient I need to add you might find this unusual but it works believe me and that is cocoa powder and I add to my cake one tablespoon of cocoa powder you get different chocolate powders. You, there's a variety of things on the market, but it's the traditional cocoa powder that I use. And I'm gonna use, if I can show you this, a tablespoon like that. It's slightly heat, but I'm gonna sprinkle that now. And this will provide a slight chocolatey hint to your cake. Again, if you don't like chocolate or you don't like cocoa powder or those sort of things, leave it out. But it does add a certain richness and chocolatiness to this cake, believe me, and it's delicious. So we now have a very sticky mixture that's almost ready to put in our baking tin. I'm now going to get all of this mixture. It's quite heavy. This pan is considerably heavy. And that mix, I'm going to get into there. It's very sticky and it smells absolutely wonderful. There's definitely a hint of Christmas in my kitchen today. Right. The mixture's in the pan. I'm just going to press it down into the corners. Flatten it out. You don't want to press it down too firmly, but you want to spread it out so that it fills or covers the base of this baking tin. And there we have it. I'll lift this up. 
as you can see, it's very heavy. <laughs> it's a big of a significantly heavy this, but there is my cake mix in the bottom of my baking tin. And I'm gonna pop this in the center of my oven at 150 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna bake this for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And I will check it towards the end by inserting a knife to see if the knife comes out clean and dry. If it comes out wet, you need to keep cooking a little bit longer. I'm sure you guys know how to uh, bake a cake and use a knife to test if it's cooked thoroughly or not. But this now is ready for my oven and that is my Christmas cake recipe. This is my cake and as you can see, they don't rise a lot some cakes rise very well these do not they're very heavy very dark very rich cake and this i will now put in a container and over the next few weeks i will drizzle some sherry or brandy onto this to moisten it and give it that sort of alcoholic flavor and shortly before christmas i will cover this with marzipan and finally with icing and decorate it with some Christmas uh, little ornaments and a ribbon around the outside. And this will eventually look fabulous on the table for Christmas. Thank you for watching my video. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can do so by hitting the button in the corner of the screen. Give us a thumbs up and hit the bell in order to get future notifications of videos that I'm putting on. Whatever you're doing, you look after yourselves, you be safe, you be happy, and we'll see you again soon in the Life's Good. Bye-bye now.